Most of the time when you think about speedrunning, you probably think about the Nintendo franchises, such as Zelda and Mario. However, it's definitely not fair to say that that's the only speedrunning communities out there. There's definitely a lot of speedrunning communities out there outside of those franchises. An easy example would be the Dark Souls series, which has grown massively over the past few years. However, a couple of other communities have been racing up, such as the Halo, and in this situation, what I'm going to be talking about is actually the game by the gnome of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now, this speedrun has actually gotten very popular the past few years. It's even been featured at Games Done Quick events. And a runner by the name of Shift has been grinding this game for years at this point, at a basically daily basis. Now, the original game, which has actually been pushed down quite far to around the 40-50 minute mark, has definitely gotten very optimized. And a lot of people, not just for speedrunning, was very excited about this new remake that was going to be released. Because not only was it going to be released on all different platforms, it was also going to be a beautiful yes, HD remake. Now, as the first day of launch, an insane warp to the last boss fight was discovered that allows you to beat the game and get this two and a half minutes. So, you might be wondering, how is this possible? How do I do this? And what's going on? So what I thought I would do today is kind of just break down this glitch and go into a little bit more detail about it because I find this glitch to be absolutely fantastic and super interesting uh, as a Zelda glitch runner myself. So. The first thing you need to understand to do this coach is how the menu system works in this game. In the original game, when you open up the menu, you had different tabs and you could basically select a mission and then you could warp to there. You could quick warp basically. And in the HD version, they remade the entire menu to have a much better layout. So you basically have all of the worlds mapped out like this. And then when you click on one, you will actually get a little menu up showing you what you can select and what you can't. Uh, obviously in this example, I just started my game, I'm literally in the intro house, so there's not much I can do. However, this is where the new glitch comes into play. So, uh, what someone discovered, and I'm going to keep his YouTube channel in the description, his name is Carl. What he ended up discovering is that you can actually store, or ba you can basically trick the game into allowing you to warp to an area that you're not supposed to be able to warp to. So, how does this work? Well, first off, when you're in the menu and you hover over a world, if you press the A button once, you will get into the second menu. This menu shows you, you know, all the alternatives for like the, basically the missions you want to select. If you click the A button again, you're then going to be brought up into this taxi menu. And this is where the game checks, can he actually go here? And obviously if that matches is true, it takes up the taxi menu and then you press A and bam, you have warped away. Now, how this glitch works is you basically want to click somewhere where you can warp. So in this case, I'm just gonna click the A button on the actual first area, like literally right as the start in the game, 10 seconds in. And you can actually warp to SpongeBob's house. What you don't want to do is you want to hover the cursor at any other world. Now, what I want you to do right now is I want you to press the A button two times on the same frame. Now I might be wondering, what? <laughs> How could you possibly press the A button twice in one frame? Well, this is where the really smart thing is to play, and I have no idea how this like was discovered. But if you on console have two controllers plugged in, or if on PC you have one controller plugged in and you have your keyboard connected, then you can actually seamlessly use both of them at the same time. So if you press a button on one of them or on the other one, it automatically allows inputs from both at the same time. So. What you can do then is you can be ready to press the space bar, which is for the PC, the way of pressing A to confirm, and the A button in the controller. And if you press both of them at the exact same frame, then what is going to happen is it's actually going to take you immediately into the taxi menu because the last menu you opened before this actually was able to select the yes, I want to warp to the very first one. So because of that, it doesn't do the check indicating, hey, can SpongeBob actually warp to this location, which means it takes up the taxi menu, you press A to confirm, and you have now officially warped. Now, why is this so useful? Well, because right in the menu, you can actually warp to the last boss fight. So by doing this, you can warp to the last boss fight. Now, unfortunately, you're pretty underpowered, but fortunately, in our case, the game just gives you some free stuff. 
You can actually just use the missiles or whatever to beat the actual boss. And even though you're on low end health and you're kind of underpowered, that's absolutely fine. And even as a casual out there, you can easily do this. Because all you have to do is you just have to stand behind this little kind of circular jump pad and you actually can't get hit. They act he actually fails to continuously hit you, which means you can just stand from here, then send a bunch of missiles and break all of the lights, which finishes the first basically phase of the final boss fight. And you then head into the inside of uh, SpongeBob's metallic boss fight. At this point, you can do a really cool trick to get down to the bottom to do this area much faster and much easier in my opinion. All you have to do is basically just jump on the side here so you don't bounce. And then you want to jump down with a double jump and you will actually land on this little platform. You can then hit the first electric switch, jump down to void out and you spawn right next to it. Then you, wanna, you can hit the second one. And then after that, you can head up to the top of SpongeBob's head and then you can hit the three switches around his head by going around and avoiding getting killed. And after that point, you can either go safe and kind of just go with a normal route, which is what I did, or you can do a really precise double jump to actually land at the very, very bare edge of this little platform. And after that, you have hit all the electric switches and you officially kill the final boss fight. And it's actually a little bit funny when you get past the credit sequence because then you're supposed to just spawn outside of SpongeBob's house and you actually activate the intro cutscene of the game of leaving his house for the first time, uh, which is a little bit interesting uh, and definitely not something you expect to see after just beating the game. But either way, I just had to make a video on this because I find it so absolutely fascinating uh, of how absolutely broken this is. Because if you guys don't know, on the original version of this game, the speedrun, like I said, is much, much longer. In fact, the world record right now as we're writing this video is 48 minutes and 58 seconds by shift, which is a drastic difference from what this game can be beaten in. And the cool part is that anyone can do this. This glitch is super easy. All you need is a controller that you can plug into your PC and it's literally free or just two game controllers for Xbox or Switch or whatever. And it's absolutely free and it's really sick and easy to do. And I really recommend you all to try it out at home. Uh, but either way, that's going to be it for today's little video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this update. Uh, also, if you're interested in seeing a playthrough of this game live, I'm actually going to do my first playthrough of this game tomorrow live on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash link7. So definitely check it out. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And I will see you all in the next one. Later, everybody. Bye-bye.